I'm Ashley Stevens. I work with Oshner Health. I'm here with a group of panelists today, superstars who are here to talk to you about this incredible program that we've partnered with the New Orleans Career Center with. It's Patient Care Tech Training Program. This will be our second cohort of this program, and we're just excited to share details about the program with you and a little bit about, about how the first program's been going. I'll review everyone since it's 2.05 now, everyone who's here and how this is gonna run. We're, we're here to talk about our partnership with the New Orleans Career Center and Oshner Health, a patient care technician training program that we've partnered to design and offer completely for free for the participants of this program. This will be our second cohort that we're discussing today that we're gonna be um, taking applications for to be a part of the program. And we are so grateful to be uh, sponsored and supported with some fantastic partners like Capital One and the Greater New Orleans Foundation. So big shout out to those organizations to help make all of this possible. We're joined by a rock star team of panelists here, and I'm gonna go through them with you here so that you know everyone who's talking. So as a reminder, hi, I'm Ashley Stevens, working with Oshner Health. I work in the talent acquisition department within Oshner, and our team specifically helps bring educational resources about opportunities with Oshner to people like you, live in your house. <laughs> We're also joined by Shannon Joseph. She is a director within our talent management department overseeing workforce development. If you want to say hi, Shannon. And maybe she's muted for a second. And maybe that's okay. No problem. Hi, how's everyone doing? Yes. <laughs> it's good to be here again. Absolutely excited yes. about today's conversations. Yes. Thank you so much for joining us, Shannon. We're also joined by Akoi Rooney, and she is a Director of Nursing Leadership Development here with Oshner Health. If you want to say hello, Akoi. Hi, everyone. So good to be with you today. Yes. And lastly, we have Shalita Domino, and Shalita is joining us to help answer any of your questions throughout the event. So we'd like to encourage you. If you have questions specifically about the program or anything about Oshner, there's an option to drop them in the Q&A. The Q&A just helps us stay super organized instead of that chat function. The Q&A gets us all organized so we can tell what your questions are and to make sure we've answered them. Now, Shalita will be either responding to the whole group if a lot of people have the same question or she might respond to you privately. And sometimes you get, you, you know, you guys may have questions we don't know immediately offhand, but we're more than happy to get back in touch with you. So they may also respond with an email to follow up with. So keep that in mind. If you see a question or if you have a question, I would encourage you to go to the Q&A and see if anyone else has already asked that question. And if so, just so we don't have so much clutter, you can actually just like, it's like a little thumbs up button on the questions that are in the Q&A, and then we'll know how many people are really interested in that particular question. We may take some questions live at the end, as in, I'll ask, I'll look at Shalita and see if she has any additional questions worth bringing up. Um, but if she's able to get to them all or there aren't any outstanding ones, then we might not. At the end of this, we're going to leave up the slide on how to get more information and we'll leave the webinar going for a few minutes in case you have any last minute outstanding questions. Now, we also are joined by individuals from the New Orleans Career Center. So first we have Claire Jekyllin and she is the Executive Director of the New Orleans Career Center. You'll say hi to everyone, Claire. Hey everybody, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, it's not really morning, but almost. <laughs> Thank you, yes, the weekends are all the morning, right? It's yes. The moment of possibility, <laughs> so. Absolutely. It's definitely afternoon. This Good is day in pajamas day, I know, Sundays for sure. And then we're also joined by Alvin David. He's a project manager with the New Orleans Career Center. So for any questions related to the curriculum for the program or any specific questions that, about the New Orleans Career Center's role in this program, he will be the one responding. So we've got someone responding from Osher, and that's Shalita, and someone available to respond 
from the Neurons Career Center. So just keep all that in mind. Um, if you have questions about any of those things, we'd be happy to take them for you. And we're going to get started now so we can make the best use of our time. Let's start by just checking in on the first cohort. Claire, how, how have things been going so far with our first group of participants in this program? Uh, the inaugural cohort is such a group of rock stars. <laughs> um, I have, our team has really enjoyed working with this program and um, I, I'm gonna just come out and say Friday was our first day of testing and everyone passed and it was a beautiful day. And so it's really lovely to follow up Friday uh, with Sunday and the opportunity to talk about uh, this program and bring together a new group of people. Um, so I wanna share a little about this group. 40% uh, of our participants were age 18 to 24. Um, and 40% of them had some sort of experience with college, but they really um, wanted to return to this craft or get into the field sooner. And so uh, we also saw a group of folks who had an early interest in healthcare. Um, we also uh, took a lot of feedback. We, we collect feedback from our participants every day. And so some of the things that the, the outgoing cohort really enjoyed were um, the fact that although this is online, the instructors worked very hard to keep people engaged and thus interested in what's happening in a, a format that is difficult and new for a lot of people. Um, they really loved having in the guest speakers. So we had some other instructors come in and talk about areas of specialty, such as cardiology. We had Miss Jill in, and then it was great to have Ekoi in. Um, the uh, students said that Ekoi coming in really gave them a sense of their responsibilities and uh, what it really would be like on the ground when they get started this next week. Um, and so, you know, I think what's most exciting also is, is really the feedback on the learning environment as well. So we're happy to see that 100% uh, felt that they were part of a welcoming environment, regardless of race, ethnicity, economic background, gender, religion. I was a diverse cohort um, coming from a lot of different backgrounds who came together to work together. Um, and will likely potentially be coworkers. And then 95% uh, felt strongly that they re re received it ju it just in time and in time feedback um, that really helped them make the most of what is an accelerated program. So really feeling good about uh, where we are and ex excited to start again. Yeah. That's fantastic feedback. Thank you for sharing all of that. Um, so valuable to hear that the New Orleans Career Center is seeking that feedback and engaged and interested to be able to learn from their processes in this first cohort. You know, doing something the first time can always raise questions and, and maybe readjustment. So I love to hear some of that positive feedback and really appreciate the, you know, the diversity that's involved in this group. I'm, I'm so excited to know that that's a commitment that both Oshner and the New Orleans Career Center are making. Um, and great to see that in this group. Um, you know, I know that if you're joining us today, um, maybe, you know, you're, you're probably not in this program yet, and you maybe don't really know what a patient care technician does. So, Akoi, I think you're my, my best person for this answer, because I know you already spoke to the first cohort. Can you share a little bit with this group, what is a PCT, and what do they even do in a day? Absolutely. So, uh, patient care technicians are very much um, about the care of uh, the patient in their average daily living activities. And so they take care of people who are uh, in need of support with toileting and bathing and, um, you know, just different hygiene issues. They're very much uh, a part of their daily lives and um, in the hospital setting. Obviously, they're very important to keeping people's anxiety low and feeling like they're in the loop and informed about what's happening, um, what to expect, and sometimes they're really anxious. And so a patient care technician is someone who really has a beautiful interpersonal skills. In other words, they really know how to connect with people, that people matter to them. Um, they're very essential in helping maintain people's dignity um, and just you know, the way that they feel in that environment um, and really advocate for them and help them feel um, 
that they are well taken care of. Um, they're very, very intimate, though. It's a very close, high-touch, interpersonal relationship. Wow. Yeah, that's, um, that's something that I think we don't realize how important that role is. We don't understand how important that personal touch point is until, you know, a loved one or, or even ourselves, you know, we've entered into a hospital setting. Um, you know, before I started with Oshner, I was a patient of Oshner's. So I've experienced firsthand what that quality personal touch really, how much that makes a difference to me. Um, and I'm sure that especially with so many COVID-19 patients we've had, that, that these individuals have played such a critical role, not only in the patient's lives, but the family's lives too, just to help guide them throughout the uncertainty of this time. Um, and not, and not just our COVID-19 patients, you know, we have so many other patients that we're still serving. It's really, really such an important role, um, including, you know, that piece you said about the dignity on site while you're in a facility. There's, I mean, there's nothing more important to get you through what could be a tough health challenge than retaining that. So thank you for sharing, you know, all those details with us. I know we've got oh. some people online who are really going to who resonate with that, I think. Their personalities would fit really well there. So I know that there are different types of roles that are all sort of similar. So Akoi, could you actually just help myself and others who are listening in understand how is a PCT different from some of those other roles such as medical assistants or um, CNAs? I think there's a couple of acronyms we, <laughs> it gets confusing. Yeah. Can you share a little bit about what's unique about this role? Absolutely. So um, generally, medical assistants are working in the outpatient setting. They're working with people in clinics. They're working with people um, that are coming in what we call the ambulatory setting or where they, you know, walk in and get regular routine care. And the patient care technicians are generally in the hospital environment. So they are inpatient or they may be in the emergency department, um, different areas that really are taking care of people who have been admitted or probably going to be admitted to the hospital. And so that, that, that role is different, really, mostly in the setting. Um, I started as a patient care tech, and that was my entry-level role into healthcare. And Shalita, I know you started as an MA, so, um, we both have a lot of experience in knowing how important that work is, really connecting with people. And um, really, for me, it helped me learn more about what taking care of people means. You know, I was kind of nervous at first. I didn't really know too much about it. So it, it was a role, it was the perfect entry-level role for me to learn a lot about the environment, learn about different roles in healthcare. Yeah, and, um, absolutely. I think um, I think that that clarity is so needed, especially when people are considering making a big career shift and determining what of those opportunities really work best for them. We do a lot of this kind of work in, in my team doing career development with individuals, in particular students. And I know the talent management team does a lot of this work as well. Um, Shannon, you know, on that note, you might be a great person for this next question. What's the relevance of a patient care tech? Why, why now? Why is Oshner and, and the New Orleans Career Center creating this opportunity right now? Um, you know, we've kind of talked about the need we've had for uh, increased hiring during COVID, but there is always a need for patient care technicians within our organization. As Ikoi so eloquently spoke about, uh, they absolutely bring dignity for our patients as they are, are recovering or receiving treatment within our organizations, within our facilities. And one of the points to all of this, Ashley, is that um, this is part of who Ashner is. It's part of our, our culture is to make sure that our values look to value-based opportunities. And those opportunities absolutely revolve around commitment to working within our communities. We want to be not only representative of 
the individuals that we serve as patients, but also in those folks who are part of our team who are providing those services and, and working with our patients as well. And one thing we strive to do is to ensure that our workforce development um, pieces are moving forward in a way that's purposeful in nature, in a way that connects our community partnerships, that it also brings about a collaboration of groups and organizations to ensure that we are meeting the needs of our community on every front. Our workforce development team has uh, has done some good stuff. We're small but mighty, but we have absolutely worked through about 22 different programs within 2019 and serviced and placed, trained, helped to gain employment and uh, also advancement in employment to 400 plus individuals externally and internally within the organization. So I will say that the time is now for us to continue to ensure that we are not only uh, engaged with our community, but we are committed to ensuring that we are providing not only the best patient care, but also being of value to our, our community as well and helping to be the, the employer of choice for individuals. Wow, yeah, I, I don't think I realized how much of an impact workforce development has made just in the last year. That um, those are some incredible statistics. Thank you for sharing that. Absolutely. Um, and I know you know you're so right. The the commitment that Osher makes to its community is the same commitment that it tells patients. You know that we make to our patients. And patient-centered care really does start as a collaborative effort across a lot of our community partners. Um, and the New Orleans Career Center is one of our you know, one of our most exciting partners to be able to offer not only a way to help us increase both the staff that we have here to offer patient-centered care, but also create opportunities for our community. You know, health at the community level really starts with access, access to education and, and access to healthcare. And Oshner is, of course, a the largest healthcare system in the state of Louisiana. Um, and I'm just really proud to hear so much of the work that you just shared that we've been doing um, even beyond this. And I think you're so right, you know, um, we continue to grow and this is a need for this role in particular that we're going to continue to need. So it's really an opportunity to get started, but also grow, to go on a new path. Um, it's very exciting for people who become participants of this program. Now, I know this is open to folks of any kind of background, but a lot of people in the first cohort previously worked in hospitality, right? So I think Akoi might be best for this. Akoi, from your perspective, what is it about hospitality skills that you found have been really perfect for this role as a patient care tech? Yeah, thanks, Ashley. So um, I definitely think that uh, the hospitality industry, you know, the focus is to uh, make people feel comfortable, make people feel at ease. And um, there's nowhere that that confidence or that ability is more important um, or more valuable than in healthcare uh, to make people feel heard and understood and um, listened to. Uh, you know, to connect with people, it, it really is, I mean, I, I think all of you who are listening in on this uh, webinar probably uh, have needed to get care at some point, and so you know how it feels to receive um, care from someone who really wants to connect with you versus uh, someone who's just doing a job, you know, and that's what Ashner is looking for. We're looking for people who are willing to make those connections and have a passion for serving their community. And so coming from that hospitality industry is an absolutely beautiful um, background of and knowledge and skill set to have. And when we look at skill, we're not just looking at, um, you know, how to run a machine or how to do certain things. I think one of the hardest um, things that we need um, to make sure that people really have, are skilled at is in connection with 
other people listening. Yeah, absolutely. I've spent um, several years in the hospitality industry, both as a server and as a hostess, even a barista. Um, and I know, you know, the difference, the difference between having a transaction and having a true genuine interaction is all about putting people first. And I did too. I was a barista too. And I also what? worked at, at a hotel. Um, yep. You have to make a really good uh, cappuccino. And, yep. um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but no, to, to know, you know, to remember what somebody likes, you know, your regular customers and to, you know, see them walk in the door and you're already fixing it for them. It's those things that make you feel good and it makes them feel good. Right. And, you know, medicine in and of itself is such a creative endeavor and it needs to be uniquely um, navigated, you know, for each patient um, with their history and their symptoms. And, you know, I'm, I'm in no way a clinical professional, but it's, it's interesting the parallels there between the way that we can approach both the science of healthcare, but also the human Part of healthcare, um, and it's similar, you know, approaching each person uniquely. That's really what this role sounds like. You know, that's really what this role takes is that same unique approach to each person that you interact with, um, and it just makes all the difference. As we know, even in retail, the the two of us who worked in as baristas <laughs> makes all the difference. Now, as I said, I'm I'm not a clinical professional, so I've never worked in a you know, in healthcare in a clinical role before. And I would imagine if there are others joining us today that if they're interested in this, you know, but maybe it feels a bit intimidating <laughs> to join healthcare in general, or, you know, especially as we begin to, as we're still dealing with COVID-19. And obviously, you know, we're so grateful that the city has, our city has, has, um, has been able to help re recover quicker than others. And I know Oshner has been such a big part of that, our amazing physicians and nurses and team. But that would still be intimidating for people, you know, who've never entered healthcare before. So what can we share um, with people joining this webinar on how Oshner is taking care of somebody, a, an employee right now? And Shannon, I think you, you might be the best person to answer this question. So what makes me extremely excited about what we do Ashley is that we not only uh, work to provide skill set in terms of what the job is and what you do every day, but we absolutely take a comprehensive approach to our workforce development programs. What I mean by that is we look at the whole person. So we have individuals who are coming into these programs who have never been in healthcare before, as you mentioned. There might be a learning curve for them. Well, there's opportunity for us to provide you with some support to help get you through this programming as well. If there is a piece that you're just not getting as quickly as some of your other classmates or you're just having a tough time getting it, we're gonna make sure you have some additional tutoring to help you with that. We all recognize also that there are barriers to employment as well as barriers to sustaining employment. So part of what we offer for our cohorts are social service supports as well. Uh, we have a social worker in place who can bring about assistance when life happens, which it does. Um, there's, there's sometimes when you've got childcare issues, you may have transportation issues, whatever the issue is that will prevent you from being successful, not only in achieving this certification, but something that might be a barrier while you're employed with us, we're going to make sure you have that support engagement to help you to get through that and find resources that uh, will absolutely help to meet the need. Once you become an employee with Oshner, you're not only working on the floor, you have access to uh, additional support with behavioral providers uh, that we have that work with us. 
We have employee assistance funds that can help you with those barriers that we talked about, those bumps in the road. Um, we also have opportunities for you to move beyond what this certification offers as well. Um, so there are absolutely opportunities for individuals within the organization to be able to grow and really be the best that they can absolutely be. Um, there, there's all sorts of opportunities that we'd love to be able to share with folks who are interested in joining us and, and know that we're here to support you through this entire process. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. Um, I think that that's so critical to be a true partner in community workforce opportunity development is understanding that there are true and real barriers to opportunities and making every effort to try to accommodate and support individuals experiencing those, um, including you know access to internet and computers. I mean, we the New Orleans Career Center I know has been able to help alleviate some of those issues you know on an as needed basis as well, which is so important. I mean, um, to be able to make these opportunities open to anyone. And, you know, something you said really stuck with me that, you know, at Oshner that I feel is, is true from when I was a patient as well as now an employee, that whole person approach. That is so critical to see not just my tasks and how they contribute to the organization, but really understanding my needs as an individual and how that will impact my ability to contribute to the organization. I know personally, I've been partaking in the COVID wellness series that Oshner launched with its behavioral support teams. We have a chief wellness officer who, who really has helped design some of these and, and do research on what people are experiencing and what that might be creating. And you know, in my, in my mind, as I experience COVID from my perspective, and, the wellness series has just been one of the ways that we as an organization have taken that whole person approach and they're available you know for free and at every level remotely wherever you are and i think that that's um besides all of our other great benefits that's one that i really enjoyed and, and feel in that whole person that you've mentioned exactly. yeah so this just to kind of get back to the, those who are on the webinar with us to understand a little more. This role is such a great start, a launch into healthcare. And as a COI can play a testament to, it can make you the director of leadership in nursing leadership development. I mean, that's such an incredible story. Um, so Shannon, why don't you share, you know, what are some of the things you can do with this patient care tech training certificate and the experience you'll gain from this? Absolutely. Um, one thing that we always want to highlight and make sure that we're committed to is the growth of our employees. It's not just about getting you into an entry level position. Now, please understand there are, we have some fabulous, awesome patient care technicians who this is what they're called to do. They love it. They can't see themselves doing anything else. This is where they want to be. But we also have individuals who want to be able to go in other pathways, see what else exists within the organization. And one thing I can attest to is that we do provide opportunities for folks to engage in a pathway within their career and move from one place to another. Um, we have opportunities for folks to continue through Oshner Scholars. Oshner Scholars provides you the resources to be able to go back to school, to be able to venture off into another occupation that you think might be something that you're really interested in doing. But one piece that I will say to you is there's also opportunity through our workforce development programs such as this, even for incumbent employees, folks who are already within our organization. We are currently looking at opportunities for patient care technicians to move into what's called a clinical research coordinator piece. There might be folks who decide, I really enjoy the patient contact, but I'd like to understand the science behind some of what's going on. This gives them an opportunity 
to then move forward in, in a position that will bring them to research, um, understanding how things happen, why they happen, and helping to find solutions for them. So there's absolutely a plethora of opportunity coming in as a patient care technician. You come in with that medical base, you have that foundation that can allow you to move into other directions. Uh, we have a medical assistant program that we have now moved to LPN. So we've got folks who are medical assistants within the organization who are, who are in an apprenticeship program and completing LPN pieces. Uh, so there's absolutely, Ashley, a wealth of opportunity for individuals. As you mentioned previously, we are the largest healthcare system within the state, which does afford us the opportunity to be able to invest in our employees. Therefore, you know, when we invest in our employees, we're absolutely investing within our whole organization. And we know that that spills over into uh, strong investments within the community as well. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and you touched on so many, so many important points that are so exciting for anyone interested in joining this organization in any capacity. You know, of course, we hire so many clinical employees, but also non-clinical employees. And the movement throughout the organization is not just, you know, upward within your own industry, but also sideways into new industries. I love that you brought up the MA to LPN program. And as we've all seen, especially during the COVID-19 response, man, nurses are have such incredible reach and opportunity, um, as do so many fields in healthcare. I mean, healthcare's just gotta be the best industry to work in and the most fulfilling. But it's so such a testament to Oshner's long-term whole person approach to every employee that it brings on. You know, I, we, I know even personally that the talent management and our Oshner learning network has been such a great part of my de professional development, leadership skills and communication skills that are all available to any employee in, in any sort of movement. Um, and of course we have geographic movement as, as an option for people who want to live in Baton Rouge or they want to, they want to, have to move because of a spouse's role. Um, the opportunities really make it make it so you really can't, you know, you really can't fail here. Oshner does everything in its power to ensure that you can only succeed here. And you know, not having to furlough or lay off employees during COVID is one of the testaments to our commitment to our employees that I've found so personally important to me. Um, so really just opportunity abounds and I really appreciate you touching on all of those points for us. Absolutely. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit more nitty gritty of the program. Claire, I want to learn a little bit more about the training. How long is the education process and, and can you just share a little bit more insights into that with us? Yeah, so thanks Ashley. Um, yeah. So the New Orleans Career Center is a local workforce training organization. We, we um, provide training in a variety of fields, but in particular, we focus majority on healthcare and health careers. Um, and so we're really uh, happy to continue to partner with Oshner and uh, grateful to expand these training opportunities. Um, let's talk about um, what this course is like. So it's a five week back to back full time uh, learning. This is a fast track program. So ultimately it means that um, there is not a lot of room for anything else like a job or an additional program like this is full time. Um, and it fast tracks you right into a job at Oshner as we've been talking about. Um, New Orleans Career Center instructors are experts and veterans from the field. So many of them have worked uh, at Osher and at other organizations and feel compelled to continue to pass on um, the opportunities to others. Um, and so ultimately, we also bring in guest speakers uh, so that uh, classes are interesting and there are more than two people in the room. Um, but really, um, this program is a hybrid program. And what that means 
means is that it has three distinct different parts in how it functions for students. So the first part is that the day is, is direct instruction, um, teaching, um, but that, that's about 30% of the program, uh, more in the beginning and as we begin to share information and knowledge, you're more engaging with others in the class. So about 30% uh, is also group interaction and really working on both the, the, the customer care skills that we were talking about before, but also just problem solving, studying, leaning on one another's strengths and all the things that make a good learning environment possible, even though we're in a virtual on the computer. Um, and then finally, there is a, a time for both independent study and work um, in order to, to work through some of the material, but you can also attend office hours and, and or get one-on-one -on -one support during those times. So there are a lot of different types of learning that happen in this program. Um, let's see. So, so that's, uh, um, thanks, thanks for sharing that. <laughs> that's a lot of great details. I know you have more to say, but um, I think it's important to to show the variety of, um, of the opportunity for both online learning as it is, you know, as a direct lecture, but also the interaction. I think being able to emulate a group discussion online is one of the beautiful blessings of our generation. And I, I'm so pleased to hear that Derwent's Career Center has made that possible. Sure. So we put up on the screen an example of a day. So you can see Danielle is our instructor um, and she has 13 years of experience. Uh, she's awesome. And so you can see the structure of a day. So this is a slide that went up one day. And so you can see like there's a morning, uh, there's afternoon, and then there's uh, a break, and then there's some more topics. But these would all be broken into pieces in terms of group um, and uh, in independent and, and uh, whole group work. And so this is an example of one day in a week. Um, and then when we're really thinking about what this looks like, uh, we also really need to talk about what the job is like. And so um, this class really covers the essential elements for passing the National Healthcare Association Patient Care Tech exam, which is a few hours, um, but is something that we're working towards all the way from the beginning of the program. Um, this is really 25 days of direct instruction and in, in feedback cycles. and um, then we also do a lot of work around the content. Um, and so if you're thinking about the uh, patient care tech exam, here are some examples. And you can see actually the number of questions and what types of topics uh, a patient care tech exam focuses on. So you can see that the bulk of the questions are in patient care, um, compliance and safety and professional responsibility. Um, infection control, phlebotomy, which I saw someone in the chat was asking about phlebotomy. Yes, uh, there's some blood. <laughs> uh, and EKG, um, and really just learning around things like sterilization and glucose and equipment. You're really getting a crash course into patient care. Um, and so that also looks like um, basic life saving, anatomy and physiology. Metal, medical equipment, um, and then we ultimately provide you, uh, the participant, with a box of supplies when you begin. And so there are some hands-on things you'll practice with, including stethoscopes and blood pressure cuffs, um, so that you're ready to go. Um, and, and then in terms of preparing for the job, at the end of our um, exam portion, then our trainees move on after passing the exam directly into orientation and hands-on practice. So um, this group is moving on to Ashner this week. They'll do orientation and a week of hands-on nursing practice uh, with Ashner uh, employees who are very experienced and are training you to get ready so that you don't hit the floor cold uh, without that opportunity to practice. Um, and so uh, finally, uh, we bring in uh, as you get closer to employment, we bring in members of the talent acquisition team. So Sean, who really functions as in a department that is commonly known as HR for many of you, came in and talked about like, look, these are the roles and responsibilities formally, and these are shift schedules, and this is where people go, and this is how this functions. Um, and then really the skills training and preparing you for the following week. So we try to really partner with you in this training. Um, 
Yeah. Wow. Let's do the next slide. <laughs> <laughs> this is so much wonderful information. I'm sure the panelists, I mean, the, the attendees have a lot of questions and are so eager to learn more. <laughs> yeah, this is, a, this is a good overview. Yeah, and so just help us um, remind everyone, this is completely online training until the very, very end to get that hands-on, um, of course, and there's that box you said of some stuff that gets sent to you, which is so cool. Like, I want to do this program now. Um, <laughs> What if candidates or participants don't have access to computers or internet? Are there ways, I think I, I mentioned this previously, but um, if you want to share yeah. a little bit about that. Yeah, I think it's really important for folks to understand that if you don't have equipment or you need to share it with, oh, a kid who's going to an online summer camp or, you know, you have multiple people in your household who need to use devices or you need one in order to participate. Uh, we have a lease program and by lease, I mean, we lease it to you for nothing and you return it and thus we charge you nothing. Um, and so we'll give you a hotspot, we'll give you a laptop, hotspot will provide internet if you need that consistently. I know some of us struggle with internet connectivity these days um, with everyone on the internet. And then finally, um, you know, we'll, we'll work with you to make sure that, uh, that that is all set up and working well in the week before we launch the program. That's fantastic. So, such a relief, I know, for some people who are experiencing um, that exact scenario you told us, that kids using the virtual summer camps and um, other people who are also in school. Um, yeah. That's such a fair point. I know that we have so many people in those situations. And clarify for us, the, certific the certificate that participants are receiving at the end of this training, what is that gonna actually be? Yeah, so this is the National Healthcare Association, which is nationally recognized. Uh, this is a common exam that people take across the country for this role. Um, and it is recognized not just in Louisiana by employers, but across the United States, should someone have you know, the, the need, uh, this will follow you. Um, of course, we're looking for people who wanna stay in our region and contribute and grow. Um, but but it's cool to know that you're working on something that is a national standard and is really recognized as a, a powerful learning tool and assessment. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a really excellent point. You know, our assuming that most people who are here are planning to stay here at least a while longer, um, but that it's really, it's really a launch into the career at large, regardless of your geographic location in another few years. And we understand this, that happens all the time. I mean, I'm currently calling from South Carolina. So <laughs> we're all, especially in very weird situations as it is now. So this, I think, is everything that I needed to understand. And I think that our, our um, panelists and our, our attendees needed to know except the last piece is how can they learn more and where can they apply? Um, what's that process look like, Claire? Sure, so one, I wanna share with you um, reflections and some of you may have had an opportunity yeah. to see this on the screen, but um, so for overall reflections um, on what uh, their experience was in the program and or recommendations. And I think you can learn a lot from what they say mm -hmm. around, um, you know, really loving uh, patients. This is really, really um, something that requires your attention over this time. It's short um, and so it's intense. Um, people really seem to enjoy learning more about body systems and how things work. It's relevant to all of us and interesting. Um, and even though the program is very fast paced, it's learnable. And that was important for me to see um, that the way in which the material is presented and broken down and um, engaged with allowed people to feel, feel good. And I think um, our last quote is high praise. Uh, the class was the best I've been in and absolutely love how the instructors were with everyone. Online learning is hard and so we're just really happy to continue to grow uh, in how we do this program and to work with, with really anyone who's interested, who's able to participate. And so let's go ahead and look at the next slide, uh, which lays out your next steps and how to apply. Um, so we have an email that is specifically 
or patient care tech, you will receive an auto reply. So don't be surprised. It's set up to work that way. Um, and put your name in the subject line because then we can keep all your information together. Um, and it will send you a link and you can go ahead and move forward in applying. Um, the directions uh, will walk you through what you need to do, but you really need an afternoon or a morning, a few hours to really step-by-step -step walk through this and to see what you need to do. Um, and also time to think about if you have any questions or need support. And again, same email. It will always have an auto reply and we are always checking it. <laughs> and That's a fair point. point. <laughs> yeah. I think um, last the last cohort, um, um, thank you for clarifying that because I know the last cohort had a couple of those follow-up questions, you know, um, how do, what do I know the next step is? Well, that, that email is going to tell you all the next steps. Um, so it's, it's, that auto reply is really helpful actually to help um, initiate and answer some of those FAQs that somebody might have. Yeah. Thanks, Ashley. So, yeah. And I think that that's everything we have prepared for today. Um, I know that we've had a few questions come through, lots of questions come through now that I'm looking at it all. And looks like we've had lots of great responses. Um, we have a couple of raised hands and I, I would encourage you instead of um, if raising your hand to maybe, could you drop those questions in the Q&A box there? We would absolutely love to take any of your questions. Um, I've got one that I know we can answer live that Ms. Shalita has offered, um, or that I think Akoi might be the best responder for this. If you are ready, Ms. Akoi, one of those questions is, do patient care techs draw blood and put in catheters? <laughs> Very specific clinical question. <laughs> You're currently muted, Akoi, so um, we can't hear you. Thank um, you. Yes. No uh, problem. Thanks, Shalita. Um, so, um, the, the role of the PCT can include those um, skills. Um, I know that in the program, Claire, they learn phlebotomy, right, which is um, accessing a vein to draw blood. Uh, but, you know, some areas don't have PCTs do that, and some areas don't have PCTs putting in catheters. It, it depends. I know that... Um, you know, it really depends on the work environment and the setting. So um, some places may, and some places may not. Depends okay. on where you're hired. Mm -hmm. huh. Okay. But it is something that they can do, absolutely. So it's in that, what, what do, you, do you call it, scope of practice. It is as part in of the job description. Yeah, the job, job description, description is what would, uh, you know, it would be within that job role. So definitely um, gotcha. okay. possible. Great. Thank you for that, that um, for that response. And I've got another question here um, asked uh, by LaRonda, when hired, is it an eight or 12 hour day? And I, I could speak to that, but maybe Shannon, you might be a better person to speak to the work schedules um, at Oshner and being able to respond to Ms. LaRonda for that for us. So it, uh in the same vein that ECOI spoke, it's going to depend on what particular uh, unit you're going to be working with. You might have a 12 hour shift. You may have an eight hour shift. We have found that we're also uh, able to utilize our patient care technicians in other roles that are not only specific to the hospital setting, but also in some other environments where we have been working to help our community with the COVID-19 response. Um, you may be called upon to work in an area like at the Pan American Building or at the Sheraton or some other uh, private institution to be able to help identify, uh, you know, just challenges that might be going on or, or help folks understand how to don P PPE and temperature checks and things of that nature. So it really is going to depend on where you end up being placed within the organization. Right, absolutely. And I think that's important um, to recognize that there are multiple options <laughs> in absolutely. all the roles. And Oshner is such a varied and vast uh, system that there are so many different options for schedules and, um, and, and work life, right? Yes, yes, um, definitely. 
I've got a question from someone asking about if they live in Alexandria, are they still able to participate in this program? So Claire might be the best one to respond to this question. Um, I think the question is, will you, will you be here in five weeks? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, then, that, if you don't mind, if I'd like to kind of jump in. Sure. Um, so based on our funding, because this, this program is absolutely free for individuals who are accepted into the program. That includes all of your supplies, your books, the education piece, all of it, absolutely free to those folks. However, along with that funding, uh, there are philanthropic donors, as you mentioned, Capital One, as well as GNO uh, Ganoff. So we are uh, absolutely excited about anyone who is wanting to be able to train and join with us in other areas. However, this particular program would be limited to those folks who are in the metropolitan New Orleans area. Perfect. Great. Yeah, thanks for that, Shannon. Absolutely. Um, here's a great question that I love. Do PCTs work directly hand to hand with other nurses? or other medical professionals? Um, I don't know who wants to take that question, but um, I love that. You know, what's the interaction like with other staff? Yeah, this is Ekoi, I'd be glad to, I'd be glad to. So I would say that is, uh, yes, uh, PCTs work as part of a healthcare delivery team. And so they, their roles are all different. Sometimes they overlap a little bit. Um, but basically, they're working side by side with all the healthcare roles, from respiratory therapists to radiology techs who come in and take um, x rays of people to um, nurses. Obviously, yes, the, the different roles of nurses, um, LPNs, RNs, and APRNs, which are advanced practice nurses. Um, who are providers oftentimes in the hospital and clinic setting. And so, yeah, it's, it's a great opportunity to get to know those different roles and to um, learn how to work collaboratively with a healthcare team. That's, yeah. I think that's actually kind of one of the beautiful things about this opportunity is that, especially at Oshner, we are such collaborative teams, both clinical and non-clinical. The number of people I work with in other departments, you know, even in my role, um, such a testament to that collaboration that in this role and with our system in particular, you're going to get exposed to people across the spectrum of clinical professionals, even the lab. I mean, um, the interaction is, is so big and it's important for your long-term professional development to get, um, to get all that exposure to other folks. So that was a great question. Whoever um, asked us that question. Um, I have a question here from Alexis. She says, um, or he, I guess I shouldn't assume, I don't know everyone's, but she says, if I have been a patient care tech for six years and I have my CNA license, do I have to do this online program to be hired? So I don't know who's the best to respond to that question. I can take it for you. Thank you, Shannon. Hey, Alexis. So Alexis, it'd be great if you <laughs> online and apply through the Oshner website for an opportunity to join our family. You don't have to go through the class. Um, if you'd like to have some sort of refresher or get the PCT certification, absolutely. But it, the choice is up to you. But we are absolutely always interested in having conversations. Yeah, absolutely. And this is such, um, this conversation is targeted for, you know, just to discuss this program in particular. Um, but you can always go to oshner.org backslash careers and go to apply to any of our many open opportunities. And guys, we have opportunities open every single day. So if you don't see something immediately that interests you or is in your field, check back tomorrow. I always recommend to job seekers at least once per week, check with every organization that you want to work for, or better yet, set up a job alert, which you're able to do from our site as well. You'll be able to make a profile within our Workday account, and then all of your application materials can just live there, and you can press apply quickly once it's time to apply to opportunities that show up. So 
little plug for that. That's the easiest way to do that with us. Um, I have a question here about um, how soon someone will know that they'll be accepted into the program once we open up the applications for the second cohort. Maybe Claire, I don't know if you wanna explain a little bit of the timing on how, how we accept and enroll. Sure, um, great question. Um, so we, uh, thanks to Travis for pointing out that the auto reply talks about cohort one being full. Cohort one is full. They tested us <laughs> Friday and Monday. So you're all good. You're applying for cohort two. So anything that's coming in now, um, we recognize, even though it says cohort one was full, like, yes, we'll, we should just take that off the auto reply. And no, yes, cohort two, um, we've just uh, put the application live again. Um, we uh, have um, some pre-screening candidates and working through the process. It starts with an application. Part of that application um, provides different sets of information about you as a candidate, um, how you're showing up experiences that you've had, or, or and, and also really a, um, a set of questions that will help you think about the job that you're going into. Um, and so are you prepared for these things and understand these things? Um, and then finally, there is an opportunity to provide an academic, um, sort of an academic skills analysis, and it gives us a picture of where your strengths are and where we may, may need to support you. Um, and really looking for people um, who are at a point where um, a literacy level is a right match for what is a lot of online reading. Um, but it's, it's really just one part of the picture of a candidate. Um, and so once that part is done, then um, our recruiter then goes in and um, provides replies, interview invites. Uh, sometimes there are two interviews. And then um, if you've moved through the training interview, which is really like, are you ready to engage in something that's very, very quick and very, very soon? and you know why you why now why patient care tech um and then uh candidates move on to ashner where they talk to someone in talent acquisition who really thinks about okay where would, where would this person fit and what's the profile here and does it seem like the right fit for ashner and then the next step is you get called and told go do uh, uh a background check and a drug screen um, which are required for employment um, and if you have further questions about that, uh, we can collect those and give them back to you. Um, but that is really then the next step before training starts. Um, and so once you've cleared all of those steps, then you're accepted into the program and we begin planning for program start and getting you introduced to teachers and really thinking about what you need um, as a learner and who you are so that we can think about how to work with you. That's great. Thank you for all that detailed information. I know that was a question um, that was submitted, you know, what's the process and, and how does that look? So thank you for going into all those steps for us here. I love this active audience. Guys, thank you participants. This is fantastic. Um, I've got another question here. Someone, Ms. Shalita Smith asks, once completed the program, I assume, and hired on, can someone attend nursing school and work as a patient care tech? And I, I think what they mean is after you are hired on as a patient care tech, can you attend nursing school while you're working? Um, I want to make sure I understand that correctly. So if Shalita, if you want to add to that question. Um, but I don't know if Shannon or Akoi might be a good person to respond to that question. Can a person attend nursing school and work as a patient care tech? Shannon, oh, I was, I can say that um, sure, basically, um, he, yes, people can work and go to nursing school, absolutely. You'll reach a point in nursing school where you have to do clinicals, but there are many people who work their way through nursing school as PCTs and um, actually have made a lot of nurse friends. Uh, and so they learn, you know, how to lean on them for support and um, just an ear <laughs> and someone to be an ally while they are going through that educational journey. So um, right. the answer is yes. 
And I know people, when I was in nursing school, um, not too long ago, uh, there, there, were, there was a classmate I had who had five kids and um, you know, didn't really have a lot of support. And she did it. And she wow. blew me away. So when I felt like I had a rough day, I knew that I had nothing. I had no words. Don't say anything. Because um, I recognized what she was going through and I admired her strength. And so, you know, sometimes when we face these hard things, even working and um, taking classes or whatever it is that we do, we just, you know, have to know that we can trust ourselves to be able to find that strength to get through whatever challenges we're facing. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Corey, I'd like to build on that. I think um, we had a couple people who really struggle with the time. And I think that uh, what I would say is that if you are uh, in the May cohort, um, the first person who identified that it just wouldn't work for them was a nursing student. And so I wanna be, it was not the content, it was the time commitment. And so for, for the um, full-time nature of this, I would just um, really, really hope that this is at a time where you're not also doing finals or you know there there are crossover times that will make this very hard so think a lot about this cohort timing in july perhaps it's the sweet spot for a lot of you yeah thanks claire I, and i was really referring just to once they complete this program and be mm -hmm. and have become employed with but yes absolutely you're right it can there are those challenging times where you do have to get some um, coordination with your employer. Um, what I will say is that our hospital policy does say that we do support people's ongoing education and we you know, do everything we can to work with our employees um, who are in good standing and doing you know, an academic program. I think the key to those types of things and to really being successful is great communication. You know, giving people heads up, letting them know um, ahead of time what you're looking at, um, putting your requests in early. So really kind of planning. I mean, I think that also makes you a really successful student too, so. Yeah, absolutely. And I wanna you know, make a plug here for one of our amazing benefits is actually tuition assistance that we offer employees. Once they've been employed with Oshner for six months, uh, six consecutive months and are in good standing, that's an opportunity to take advantage of tuition assistance to get additional education. Um, and we can talk more through that, you know, if you go to our careers page and apply, we can share that with you. Um, I, it's such an amazing way to be able to start launching into that new opportunity. And of course, we also have, as Shannon mentioned, several internal opportunities for employees who are already working with Oshner in some capacity and want to shift into a different role. Um, there's 22, I think you said it, so 20 plus programs, so that's a lot. <laughs> I don't know them all personally, um, but you know, getting in the door is, is step one, and before step one is being a part of this program. <laughs> so, you know, and just, just a, another plug, if you find that this opportunity just isn't the right fit for your personality or your life or um, this program doesn't make sense for you right now, that doesn't mean Osher doesn't have opportunities for you. We like, you know, like I've said, we hire people across clinical, non-clinical people with tons of degrees, you know, medicals and law degrees and people with no degrees. This is, such a diverse industry that you can really join and make a career, not just a job, but really a career with Oshner across so many different opportunities. Um, we're just here, you know, talking about one, one sliver of those opportunities today. Um, let's see, we've got a few more questions I want to get to for our attendees. Sharon asks, once you're considered an Oshner employee um, in Baton Rouge, is employment held only at Oshner in Baton Rouge. And I know I can briefly speak to um, the opportunity to move around. So um, not stuck by facility forever and end, you know. Um, but Shannon, you may wanna speak to that answer for Ms. Sharon there, if you don't mind. 
and and let me just make sure I'm hearing correctly. Sharon, you're asking if there's availability to move from one facility to the next. If you're training here in New Orleans, are you then able to move to Baton Rouge? I'm going to assume that's what the question is. So, just as Ashley just said, absolutely. If there is opportunity in Baton Rouge, once you have completed this program, we will absolutely uh, be able to assist you with that. Now, I will tell you your clinicals will have to take place here in New Orleans, and that's that week after that Ecoy and Claire spoke about. And I will say we are looking to hire individuals for the greater New Orleans metropolitan area, being that that's where the greatest need for employment is currently at the moment. But that is not to say that after you've been employed with us for at least six months, and are in good standing, there is availability for you to be able to have conversations about moving to another facility. Yeah, great point. Um, the, the flexibility to move is, is far reaching, either in all the way up to Shreveport, right? <laughs> Lots of opportunities. Um, I've got another question here. How do we get matched for, um, for a location and specialty once you're hired on with Oshner as a patient care tech. That's a really important, you know, what's that recruitment process look like? Um, and I can speak a little to that from someone on that talent acquisition team. When you apply for an opportunity, you know, at the end of this program, Sean, who is one of our incredible leaders in our talent acquisition team, um, will get you set up either himself or get you set up with a recruiter who oversees a certain facility and get to know your preferences and where you're interested in working. Um, we have four hospitals in the immediate New Orleans region, plus of course several in the greater area, and they work through that with you um, on an individual basis. And I don't know if you guys have anything else to add, but um, it's my short answer from my own TA experience <laughs> to get that figured out. And that's based on need. Um, the need within the organization, as well as your, uh, you know, what works for your life. And Ashley, I just want to correct myself. I actually think it's a okay. year as opposed to six months. After you've been employed with us for a year, then- Oh, to transfer, yes. Standing, you can transfer, yes. Yes, correct. Unless there's extenuating circumstances that we work through on an individual basis. Right, exactly. Exactly. Um, there is- um, Diamond, I see your question, and I think I'm going to offline it for um, just to interact with you personally because this group won't know as much about your question there. So we'll get to that and um, we'll send you an email follow up to help you with that and, um, and be able to answer you since it's a very specific question about something totally different related to this field. And I think we're getting near the end of questions. Wow, this is great. So I'm gonna wrap up here. We're just, we're almost 15 minutes over. Um, attendees, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for all of your very thoughtful questions. I see almost 60 questions here answered and I'm sure that that has um, tons of people involved in a lot of those questions. If we get some more in, we're gonna keep this up um, for a few more minutes. Um, so if we get any more, we'll keep answering them for you. Um, like, here's a great one. Is the when you're hired on with Oshner as a patient care tech, is it full time or part time after you're done with this program? And the answer is full time. Um, that's very exciting to be able to have that. Um, I don't know if you know Shannon. If you want to add anything to that, they also ask specifically about benefits, um, which we can talk through when you get recruited with a recruiter. But Shannon, whatever you've got, you know, to respond to. Absolutely, it's a full time opportunity, uh, full benefits as mentioned, including employee assistance, health insurance, everything that uh, Ashna offers to all of our FTEs, our full-time equivalent employees. So absolutely, yeah. yes. Yeah, and there are some really great benefits in part of Ashna. Um, so yeah, definitely full-time, and that's what a, what a cool opportunity that is. The value of full-time benefits, whew, it's worth it all to me. <laughs> um, so thank you all. We're going to stop the questions there at 15 minutes. So appreciate you attendees for joining us. Um, really excited to see the second cohort 
apply. I know Claire mentioned again, she's going to, um, they're gonna fix the auto reply, which currently says that it, the program is full, but that was for cohort one. <laughs> Everyone show some grace to us all as we're all, I'm just, they've been very busy at the New Orleans Career Center for the last few weeks. So, so don't worry if you've gotten that auto reply, um, that's not for, your, for the second cohort, that's just for the first one. <laughs> um, so clarifying that, and we're gonna keep up um, this slide here for a few more minutes. If you wanna take a screenshot or get a pen and paper and write down that email, we'll be able to get back in touch with you. Um, and if there's anything else that comes through, we're gonna keep the Q&A open, but I'll give my panelists the opportunity to, to sign off now, but this will remain open for a few more minutes, attendees. So just keep that in mind. Panelists, thank you so much, both from the New Orleans Career Center and from Ochsner Health. Thank you so much for all your time and your thoughtful responses. I know we've all been here. Very, very glad that you've shared that time with us. Thank you so Thank you, much. Ashley. Thank you. Thank everyone. you guys. Yeah. And Bye -bye. if you guys need to go ahead, go and again, attendees, we'll leave this open for a few more minutes. Um, so any other questions you have, please feel free to keep sending them in. Um, and we'll get to them either typed responses here with you, or we'll, we'll grab your email from your registration and get them back to you individually. But otherwise, Thank you for attending. And I'll, my face will still be here for a few more minutes. So please feel free to add any more questions you have before you leave. And, and I'm sure, um, looks like your question is about nursing. Um, how long does it take to become a nurse? Um, I will make sure that we connect with you separately to answer this fully. Um, it does depend on the program. There are various programs. There are programs that are online and part-time and there are some that are in-person full-time. So if you are interested in becoming a nurse after you've been employed with Oshner and you wanna go through nursing school while you're still employed with Oshner, that really depends on your personal situation and what program you choose. We do have a um, partnership with Chamberlain School of Nursing that um, that's a really great option and it includes a discount for Oshner employees, but it varies, that program is a different time than if you did a local program in person. So just to quickly say, it, it varies by program and whatever is possible for your, um, for your lifestyle and your own schedule. And I see some other raised hands. So if you have any more questions, um, instead of raising your hand, if you, you would just stick your question in the Q&A, that would be the best way to deal with this. And we'll, again, we're gonna keep this open so you'll have time to type it. We're not going anywhere for a few more minutes. <laughs> And as always, all of your questions can also go to that apply-pct at nolacc.org. I see we still have so many participants logged on. If anyone has questions, um, please take the time to send them in now. I don't have any more coming in. So if you're waiting to hear an answer to something so far, my Q&A is now empty. <laughs> so feel free to hop off. Um, but again, we'll just keep leaving this open in case someone does have any um, additional questions for the next few minutes. Or if you have any feedback you wanna share with us, if you enjoyed this, we would love to know that too. Thank you, Radnika, I appreciate that. Thank you. It's been a pleasure having this webinar with you. Um, Amin, are students in nursing school eligible for this program? Um, there's not, you're not uneligible, ineligible, excuse me, get my grammar right, um, but it is very much, um, it's very, very difficult to do both programs. They really discourage the combined, um, the combined program. It is really intended for individuals who are not currently pursuing another program. So to ensure that we're giving opportunities to folks not already on, um, you know, it, already pursuing another degree, because uh, nursing school is gonna bring you so many hours of work already to do. And if you have any further questions about um, the program in particular, then um, 
that email address that's on the screen here would be the best place to put that for sure. And I'm looking at your question, Sharon, so give me a second to read it fully. Gotcha. Um, if selected, you would do on the job training in New Orleans before working at the hospital in Baton Rouge. So yeah, all the on the job training for this program is in Baton Rouge. I mean, is in New Orleans, excuse me, talking for a while. All the training, on the job training does occur in New Orleans. Um, yes, and then you would work at any eligible participating facility who needs a patient care tech um, as determined with the recruiters when you apply. Um, Quandra, will there be other educational programs? If you mean for this specific program, that's determined um, by the funding, interest, and need. So we were able and, um, and needed a second cohort. Both Oshner had enough opportunity to be able to create, you know, to be able to bring on and hire um, enough from a second cohort. And we evaluate that, every, you know, every few weeks, um, especially during COVID, this is still a sort of figure it out um, week by week, sometimes day by day. <laughs> um, but we've, this has also been made possible for, you know, because of incredible, um, financial supporters like Capital One and the Greater New Orleans Foundation. So stay tuned is my short answer. <laughs> stay tuned. Oshner does have additional programs that are not a patient care tech training program. Um, so if you're interested in that, I would encourage you to stay. Oh, you're welcome, Crystal. Thank you for sharing that. Um, stay in touch with us on social media. We do have careers at Oshner Health on Facebook as well as Instagram. Um, and also on Twitter, our most active is Facebook, where we share event announcements and recaps of events. Um, and we'll tag different partners if we have a partner opportunity that comes up. Um, and then Instagram is probably our next most used social outlet. So if either one of those are ones that you use, we would encourage you to stay in touch with us that way. Um, you can also join our talent community. So if you're not sure what you want to do and you're not really sure where to go next, you can go to our Oshner Careers website, and that's oshner.org backslash careers, even this. And um, there's a space for you to just join the talent community. That's kind of a general interest place um, that we can help answer any of those other questions for you. Oh, Sharon, thank you so much. I appreciate you joining. Um, this is, we love these programs. We feel like this is Oshner at its best, doing collaborative work to do community per development. Um, one of the reasons I joined the organization because it's so valued centered. I saw that as a patient and then I saw it, I see it now every day as an employee, truly. So thank you for that feedback, I appreciate that. Um, Kanitha, they said you used to work for Oshner. Is that an issue um, getting into the program? Not into the program at all. Oshner does, um, scan prior employees just to see what what may have caused the separation of employment. Um, and so that's just, you know, on a on a case by case basis. Um, if you have any questions about that, um, get in touch with us. Um, if you go to our Facebook page and send us a message, um, Caitlin, who's been on here helping us with the slides and all the messages, she can help get you in touch with the right person. Um, if you want to just get into um, a couple of questions about prior employment, but the program doesn't have that as a um, as a specific criteria as part of that. So, but thanks for that question. It's a smart smart question, especially if you've worked here at Oshner before. Let me check the chat and make sure. Oh, I appreciate all the thanks, everyone. I appreciate that, especially on a Sunday. You know, we're all here to help you. We're all here to um, answer your questions. We hope this has been helpful. I know it's been going on a long time, but we'd rather stay as long as you have questions. Um, I was gonna leave this open up until the 30 mark. So if you have just a few more minutes, we'll, we'll um, allow you any other questions that we could answer here for you. Um, and 
you know, if not, again, that website apply-pct at nolacc.org is the best way to find out more about this specific program. The New Orleans Career Center really is the team that's overseeing the program and the curriculum and the hours and the commitment and all of that. Um, so that'll be the best place to go for sure. Looks like I still have about 30 participants here. So get your questions in if you have them um, or responses or feedback about if you enjoyed this, if this was helpful, if this answered your questions, um, if you had technical issues, we're here. We'll, we'll keep doing these for um, a number of topics. Um, I actually, our team also hosts something called Talent Talks, where we talk about other opportunities within the organization um, or different, um, different regions. So if you are, in, if you already work in healthcare and you're just interested in staying in touch with us and learning more, we have other webinars like these that are just to share some information. You know, what, what does recruitment look like at Auctioner right now? And are we hiring? And what does that process look like? So happy to have you join us for any of those. And you can find out more information about all of those on Facebook. Our careers at Auctioner Health Facebook page. Okay, just a few more minutes here. Oh, great question. Is this session recorded? Yes, it's being recorded, if for no other reason to help us so that we learn from our experience um, on whatever we said or, you know, to make sure that we know everything that we shared with you guys. Um, I have to double check with you, Amin, on the second part of your question. So give me just a moment and I will answer the second part of your question here in a second. <laughs> Tam, thank you. Yeah, you're, you're welcome. Uh, love talking with you. Love doing these. I, I kind of joke about, um, I did theater growing up for years and years. And so this is good practice to get used to, you know, being in front of audiences. <laughs> of course, I do this as part of my, my normal job as well. Okay. So can we, um, I mean, the second part of your question is, can we get a link of the recording? So I wanted to confirm that with you. That's what was happening over here. Um, before I told you the way, I knew we were gonna share the recording, but I wasn't positive how. Um, so Caitlin, um, who's part of this, and again, manning this from the back end for us on my team within Town Acquisition, um, within a couple of days, she will upload this video to YouTube. And um, then she can email out a link to, to the YouTube video so that you can watch it there. So that there's not like she's not just sending you a, a really giant recorded video in an email because I don't think email most email would not allow that big of a um, of a file to be <laughs> sent via email. So she'll we'll upload it on YouTube. Um, if you go to YouTube and go um, just type in Ashner Health, there's actually multiple playlists. Um, usually, so we share that um, some of these events are are also on just the general Oshner Health YouTube page. And Careers at Oshner Health is its own playlist. So um, I'm not sure how we'll organize that once we get it uploaded, but this and other talks will be available on the Careers playlist. Um, so if you're just interested in some of the other stuff that we've done, it's also uploaded there um, as well. A reminder, if you have some raised hands, um, just drop that stuff in the Q and A. That's the easiest way for me to um, to be to see your question and answer that. And just going to take about two more minutes here um, so that we can let all of our volunteers from both Oshner and the New Orleans Career Center get back to their Sunday. <laughs> Don't see any coming through. Uh, Alexis, glad you enjoyed it. Appreciate that. Glad you enjoyed it. Hopefully we made it um, informative and fun a little bit. <laughs> I know informational sessions can be hard to, to make fun. Um, but I, I mean, I personally, I enjoyed hearing some of that feedback from the first cohort personally. So yeah, glad that you joined us. Thank you. Excited to see everyone who was on here come through um, the PCT email.
All right, I don't have any more questions coming through. So I'm going to assume that my remaining 25 participants are just listening in in case someone else had a question. Um, we're at that 2.30 mark, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up here. Thank you all so much. As a reminder, email that email if you're interested in applying. Make sure to put your first name in the subject line. That helps that team at the New Orleans Career Center keep everything organized. Um, and as I mentioned, as Claire mentioned, it does currently have an auto reply about the first cohort being full. That's just a little error that they're going to fix. Um, so don't think that that means that it's full for you for the second cohort. We've just opened the doors for the second cohort. Um, thank you, Radnika. I also wish you a happy Sunday and everyone else a happy Sunday. We'll see you in the email box and on our social media pages. Very excited to interact with you all. Everyone be safe and we'll see you soon. Thank you.